Hey guys, it's been a while and I haven't really had a chance to touch uh, the second nap in over a month. So where are we with the kit? What have I got to finish? What have we got to catch up on? So I uh, demasked the canopy because the tape was starting to peel off anyway. So we've got some uh, out of, out of some paint bleed through where the masking tape hadn't overlapped properly we've got residue so we're going to give that some, a clean up and remask it most of the masking seems to have gone down well although there i can see bits where the paint's starting to come off where it wasn't primed so yeah just need to remask that give it a clean with some ipa hopefully the chassis itself has gone together mostly quite nicely so got the uh, extensive set of panel lines to uh seam lines to worry about so we'll be getting teeny tiny bits of a uh, green pussy pushed into that and then give it all a damn good sand the uh, scoops for the engine cockpits all in and we'll be fitting the canopy on top of that so we won't have to worry about masking that off uh, bottom panel in between the landing gear as well landing gear it's had ages to set so that shouldn't be going anywhere uh, front gear will need, will need to go in actually looks quite nice in there with the uh, enamel wash the pisset tube and I've got the clear cap for the front this time uh, I have, after I've sanded all this down and retouched everything uh, it will be getting another coat of primer so i'll hopefully take away the big change in tone where i've airbrushed the darker stuff on i wasn't particularly thrilled with that, with how it all got finished uh, we've got the uh, engine exhaust wheels so that those will need to come off get the seam line removed oh nuts when did that happen that's upsetting my aerial's a bit wibbly wobbly have to be a bit more gentle with that that's annoying uh, but the work that i've done on the pods has paid dividends i think that's looking much neater although which side is it one of the sides Yeah, one of the there. So this side hasn't quite married up as nicely as over here for reasons entirely unknown to me. Uh, yeah, lots to do. But yeah, still got all the lessons from the first one to bring forward. So we'll get some gloves on, give this a clean and remask it, and then crack on with the. Uh, rest of the body <clears throat> so um that's the canopy cleaned back down uh, as, as you can see the IPA has taken all, almost all the acrylic paints off I also found some uneven bits where this came off the sprue so that's been dealt with there's uh, a bit of scratching so I'm going to have a quick go at buffing that out with uh, some of the scratches out with a piece of em uh, very fine emery board just see if I can get it shiny again and as it's um, well, all gone back to basically bare plastic I did recently pick up some of Ace K uh, ga gauzy agents so I'm going to give it a dip in this and uh, leave it to dry whilst I pop out uh, maybe interest I'm not sure if you can if you can uh, use this and then mask on top of it but as I said it's all part of the learning process so yeah quick quick buff with a fine piece of a uh, very fine sanding stick try and take some of those scratches off 
and then a dip in glass coat gauzy agent and see what happens. So we've uh, just done our dip. I can see that the gauzy coat is uh, almost like PVA. It's uh, all over. It's settling quite evenly. So what's, what do the instructions say again? Simply dip and let dry for a few minutes. Clean excess around the edges to achieve a uniform layer for best results. Allow product to dry in a dust-free environment. So we'll put that down there. Have a quick tidy up. Yeah, I'll uh, pop out for a spot of Sunday lunch. Find something else to do. Yeah, come back and see how big a mistake this was or wasn't. But uh, yeah, we've got lots of, lots of little bits to do. So we've successfully remasked the canopy this time using significantly fewer pieces of tape. We've got just the three, uh, nothing internally with all the ed edges trimmed so this can get glued st straight down onto the hull. Uh, so uh, the uh, gloss coat has made along with the Tamiya tape, it's not particularly tacky so I'm quite confident that that won't come up unless it sets and reacts over time but that'll be another lesson learned. The uh, edges of the canopy were rubbed down with the edge of a chopstick and then just trimmed using a hobby knife. So I've gone from loads of longitudinal bits of tape to four bits of tape going over doing the canopy pieces and either end of the complex shapes first with a final piece going over uh, the gap. Uh, yeah, much happier with this job. Uh, it's practically new. But yeah, that, that's done. So what's next? Uh, get some gloves on and we'll get some putty on the go. Start filing down and filling the uh, gaps in the chassis. And we'll have another look at the wings as well. So guys, I've been coming across a few problems. Once again, the uh, forward undercarriage has decided to keep on falling apart. I've got it glued together again, but what I've noticed every time it fails, it's uh, getting more and more fragile. So. I have acquired the scale aircraft conversion uh, metal undercarriage set, uh, which I've already clipped out. And I've used some paint on base coat, nice flat black. So that's just about ready to attach. And I was uh, pulling proverbially pulling my hair out, not pulling my proverbial hair out, I do actually have hair, because on the actual kit itself, one of the rear undercarriage parts had worked. So internally, you have a, a part that just rests next to, uh, to a piece that rests next to each other. And despite my best efforts with the super thin, it kept on working loose. But of course, I've because the parts were painted. So what I've actually what I've done, what I should have done in the first place, was I've just put a, t a little bit of super glue in there, uh, got the undercarriage chewed up. And it's in position and holding quite nicely now. Uh, it just took me a bit longer than it should have to realise that I don't just because it's styrene, I don't have to use styrene glue on this I can use super glue and it's done exactly what I needed it to. Uh, when I ordered the metal undercarriage I also thought I'd get just because 
I need to put the, the uh, postage price up. Uh, metal pitted tube. Uh, one of the uh, failings on the previous kit, of course, was it was getting knocked and dropped and uh, it didn't really like it. Uh, the instructions for this one require me to drill and use part of the plastic kit, so I'm not sure if this will actually be any more robust, but it will be to scale. But as we have it, we're going to have a go at cutting and drilling this piece out. Assuming I've got a 0.4 mil drill bit to use. And uh, yeah, get that attached and then get it on the model. And then we'll be pretty much there and ready to go to uh, prepping the exhaust, undercarriage wheels, and actually get the kit rebase coated, especially seeing as I took all the paint off of the canopy. Oopsie daisy. And uh, yeah, we'll get this painted up. So having gotten this far, it seems I don't have the bit at the moment that I need to pre-drill the mounting points, so these are going to get bagged up. What we can finish this evening though is getting the undercarriage mounted onto the kit itself, so a little bit of disappointment, but I've now just ordered tools which should be here tomorrow, and that'll let me get this finished. And I've also now got time to get the wheels off and seam lines removed so yeah just gotta spend the time a bit more wisely so there we go that's at least one of the problems i've been contemplating the last few days sorted the undercarriage is all in place i'll have the pitted tube in place tomorrow and get it rebase coated take the edge off some of the uh dark detailing. Only thing left to do is get this gap that's appeared underneath the wings again filled and then we can get spraying. Hi right, and here we are again. Uh, so I am now ready to start airbrushing the kits. We have uh, filled in that's a really bad angle with the light. Let's just dismount it from here. We've remasked and fixed the canopy, uh, filled in some of the really bad seam lines and rescribed them using a couple of sculpting tools. Uh, we've just taken the, filled the kit up with blue tack essentially. And uh, yeah, and mounted it onto one of the sticks from the oh dear let's focus in there we go uh tidied up the seam lines on the underside and top around the panels with a bit of a mix of green stuff and milliput i have drilled out and fixed the metal uh Pitted tube, F fix the met metal front undercarriage after ruining and breaking the original plastic piece, and that's the original pit uh, pitted tube. Uh, just a slight difference in scale and thickness there. Uh, bagged up and filled the undercarriage bays. Uh, I've even fixed an aerial from the previous kit that I didn't use them from to repair that second aerial so we've got the complement of all three aerials again and yeah just about to uh, what else have I done? Ah, yeah, so uh, the gap underneath the wings has been addressed again with green stuff this time with a bit more finesse than the first time he says still scraping away little bits of rubbish yeah, the gap's been filled. I've done as much rescribing as I can. And I am content to take this across to the airbrush booth and 
go over it all again with a base coat, especially for areas like this where everything's been scraped away along the seam lines. But yeah, we'll be, it's very nearly a yellow yellow jacket again. And we'll have a look at what it looks like after the base coat and first, uh, first layer of nat yellow. Back in a bit. Right, so here we are after our first layer of the Hataka yellow, more specifically. Uh, the lemon yellow from the one of the RAF Aerobatic series. So we have uh, three to two to one to one ratio of lemon yellow, the Hataka traffic white, I think along with nice no, uh so it's 12 12 drops of the yellow three drops of the white along with six drops of thinner and then three drops of the vallejo flow improver which has helped immensely keeping the coat keeping the coat lovely and smooth all over a uh, little bit of coverage problems are just where I didn't quite make enough so the next one will be the same ratio but slightly more but yeah we've got nice even lovely uh, it's dried beautifully it the quality of just looking at it from my perspective the smoothness and quality of the finish on the paint is so much nicer than my first go uh, there's no puddling there's no spider webbing from too much paint being applied in any one area the, the first layer on here has gone much better. Uh, adding the white has helped with the opacity, although you can still see even now some of my overzealous pre-shading is still showing through. And some areas are a little bit duller, particularly on the tips of some of the control surfaces on the nose, just where I didn't quite have enough paint to finish the coat. But we'll go on to uh, another coat. And then we'll take the white out to remove the opacity and just help keep that nice dark colour uh, and help that come through but yeah first first coats on and I'm feeling really confident about uh, much happier with the quality of the finish the consistency of the coverage and how the paint's going down all of this practice is really paying off right on to the next coat and here we are on coat number two the coverage is, is much more even now Stip, so a little bit of texturing has come in a little bit of stippling maybe just if, if i'm being really pedantic looking at it but it's still much nicer much smoother much more even uh than my first go on the first nap uh even got coverage on the on the pit at tube now uh the control services are much more even uh all across uh we've still got good definition on the, most of the control surfaces uh, underside's a bit squiffy because of what, where I've done filling and sanding, but that's me, not the kit. Uh, quite a smooth cover on the seam now on top, on top and underneath the nose cone. Uh, the joins underneath the wings uh, painting in quite nicely. My uh, substandard technique with the putty showing through more than the materials yeah it's going really well so i'm going to be taking the white out and going with a darker color hopefully smooth that uh gradient you can just make out still uh from the pre-shading that i managed to toe down when i rebase coated but yeah i think two more coats with uh uh without the white in just to darken it a bit and that'll be the top coat done ready for a layer of gloss and decals exciting it is going so much quicker and much nicer than my uh, first goes is really good all right guys so it's uh, been a productive interval we've desprued the wheels got the black painted in with some uh Cicidel black base coat got the uh, air brakes and undercarriage flaps often painted 
uh, more important uh, and also these have also been lightly glossed more importantly the main kit itself has been glossed was still a bit pebbly but not as bad as the first kit much cleaner and actually looking at that with the uh with the lights playing off of it that looks really good <laughs> so we're ready for decals and a panel wash on this annoyingly at some point the uh little bucket that goes in the back as the thruster has pinged off and disappeared somewhere so uh, this will be another incomplete kit but I have to keep on reminding myself these are the kits that I'm learning my lessons on before I go on to the 148th versions which are going to be a bit more serious uh, bits and pieces that are a bit frustrating so we've got I uh, had some black le leap off my paintbrush onto the model here and come off the edges where I've touched in uh, going off my reference for XR992 the uh, little bit of black leaked around the pitot tube insert so that's a little bit off color but I'm yeah I'm still absolutely thrilled just trying to get the angle right with the light with how this looks oh she's beautiful so yeah we're gonna get some gray panel line wash and the decals on uh, a bit of black on the undercarriage just to help demark parts uh, what i've realized is with the undercarriage the undercarriage flaps is i'm going to need to cut part of the top off and slide them on because i can't get them over uh, with the undercarriage in place but that shouldn't be too great hardship uh, yes yeah, it's it's, uh, it's all coming together now uh, the lessons learned on the first kit have been applied here so you know adding a more thinner more flow improver to help with the level of the finish has paid off I think a bit more uh, time uh, I'm not going to be pre-painting the spruce before joint before assembling uh, yeah it, it's it's so much better than the first one but there is still stuff to, there is still there are still lessons here and taking us forward into the uh the red arrow hawk and then the 148th kits i'm really happy with everything that this kit has given me uh yeah we're gonna crack on with it now get the decals on and you've got the uh clear part for the landing light and the canopy mask still on but yeah we're gonna get the decals on and get get the uh, panel washes and enamel washes on so here it got here is guys we're uh, nearing the closing stages since the last video we have put on an utterly delightful gloss coat still some pebbiness to it but as you can see it's I well, at least I think it's a much more uniform finish than my previous attempt and you can also see we've uh, micro sold and micro set the decals on lovely panel lining coming through there the uh, yeah it's really really coming together now only thing that I've really let myself down with is the uh, undercarriage is a little bit skew not quite bob on but it's learning experience and annoyingly I've uh, lost the engine nacelle the exhaust nacelle so that'll be missing ad infinitum but yeah we've got uh, panel lining weathering on the undercarriage gloss coat the lot a little bit of matte on the tires and that'll be it uh be able to end the video finish my uh second airbrush build and my fourth airfix kit uh, i've got the hawk bae hawk t1 to move on to next so we'll do something in red and we all know 
red ones go faster so hopefully that will get through the build process much quicker i just love even through the camera this looks good i just love looking at this already really happy with everything i've learned on this I, the quality of the finish uh, the experience of mixing and uh, preparing the paints for the airbrush the experience of getting the whole tiny hole drilled in the tiny bit of plastic for the teeny tiny pit at tube uh, the lessons learned with the undercarriage yeah this has been a great build and it's nearly done so we'll uh, get that parked and we'll crack on all right guys and here we are at the end of what has been months of work because actual work's been taking me away but shouldn't be doing that much anymore so uh the kits should be coming out more than once every two or three months so from the summer we have my original go at the nap with the training squadron markings although we still have the uh lemon yellow paint scheme and the slightly different uh looking effort from the last few months uh in full yellow jack livery absolutely thrilled with the uh difference between the two kits and the chance to apply everything from here to here and the fact that i actually had one complete kit to finish that was also pretty damn cool oh, bits of undercarriage to the side bloody hell uh it doesn't really show up uh on the camera with the lighting but between the experiments with different color panel washes and going really hard with the pre-shading on the first one the difference in the coloring between the two is really apparent to me i don't know if i don't know if you'll be able to see it uh the on the only thing that i'm a little bit angry about is the fact that the uh exhaust in the cell for the second one has gone missing so and just have this uh lovely empty hole on the back end of this one so yeah we did everything we could with this we had no canopy and no uh light cover at the front we i uh, learned that put pit at tubes are incredibly fragile and liable to bend uh metal ones are slightly more forgiving you can bend them back without worrying about breaking them this poor thing uh i do have three aerials on the second one uh whereas i have none of them on this one uh but yeah they are between the undercarriage and the aerials on the on this particular kit the airfix uh, 172 they are quite fragile i had to cannibalize one for this one from this kit because you might be able to make out the shadow from the uh, two holes that they fix in where i didn't use them uh yeah just really thrilled give you a closer look so picked the panel lining out with tamiya's enamel gray enamel based uh panel lining fluid where i used uh sanding blocks you can see just play with it in the light a bit that i've lost some of the the uh kits lining on the nose there as well as losing some of the fidelity on details come on focus underneath along the midline but i did do or in my opinion i did quite a nice job tidying up the actual center line from where it joins of course airfix did the uh, smart thing at the top and i think it's the right hand side that the top part joins at which has pretty much been completely filled in by the paint now nice sharp lines there i really happy with this gloss coat look at that not perfectly smooth but much nicer than the uh if we 
Oh God, look at that. So that is from trying to use uh, enamel thinner to get rid of the panel lining and stripping off gloss coat. But you, if you look at the, don't know if you can see the dark spots from where the uh, lumps and bumps and pebbiness in that versus a not perfect, but smoother finish on the second. Uh, yeah, don't close up your cockpit and put your canopy on until you've definitely finished painting in the detail for your cockpit, ladies and gents. So, underneath we have a bit of black uh, detailing on, on the silver of the undercarriage, a little bit of dirt and then I brushed on some matte gloss just to take the shine off the tyres. Uh, yeah, decals went down, with no problems whatsoever. What's interesting is where I did try and go a bit thick and heavy with the second coat to see how it, it, as it smoothed out. It did go down wonderfully smooth for the most part over the decals, uh, but then because it, the gloss coat particularly liked the decals, it I can just make out the edges of them again, it's particularly the uh, larger letters, which is a bit weird. Yeah, uh, I've had posted up the uh, photos on a few Discord groups and in my local modelling groups and had loads of compliments on on the yellow. So I, I do have a 148th kit to do for this. And what I'll be doing before going this far is a piece of advice I've been given several times now is to base coat yellow with pink. So I'll be getting some spoons out to experiment with that before blowing this up uh, a third of a scale to 1 48th. Yeah, the, the, the both are gutted that this isn't a completely complete kit but everything I've learned on these will be going on towards the the Hawk T1 that's coming up next. Bit of red arrow red. And then we'll be moving up to the 148th uh, aircraft, more aerobatics, uh, more less, uh, no doubt more to the uh, Different upgrades to try on those, but yeah, the, the pisset tube was eye-opening didn't realize that I could be so precise with something so small with my bare hands. The masking problem I had on the tail on both of these is something I've still got to find my way around. Um, the decals have gone down really nicely. The uh, overzealous pre-shading, diluting the paints, all of the, all of the stuff that these have taught me, it's been invaluable. Uh, and a despite it taking so long it's not because I haven't wanted to do it it's just I haven't been able to invest big blocks of time uh, in getting this done but yeah I'm so thrilled with the end result and everything these that these kits have given me and I'm looking really looking forward to getting my teeth into the uh, Hawk next it's just it's not focused properly. Oh, well. yeah, getting my teeth into the hawk and taking these lessons forward into that. Doing a better job there again and taking those lessons forward into the uh, kits that I'm hoping to take take around with me to thing uh, scale uh, display at scale models for my local uh, scale model conventions for my local group. Uh, onward and upward, yeah. But yeah, XR 992 has flown by the Fallen Nat display team, a bunch of guys who are conserving the Nats in the UK. Uh, I'll have links and information for them uh, below in the description. And if there's anything else you want to know or want me to add for my, the process that hasn't been mentioned in all of my dives in and out, uh, just let me know. And if I can, I'll get the information to you as quickly as I can. 
thank you for your time thank you for watching thank you for putting up with me and my rambling i'm realizing this isn't run on for nearly 10 minutes but yeah i hope you like uh like what's coming next